What's going on, everybody? I'm Filter Wrestling, and is it just me, or was Raw good this week? SmackDown, you may need to like start being careful here, because you're doing dog food bullshit, and Raw's kind of coming together and actually getting things done. But this is a quick, um, oh, 10 to 15 minute Raw review. Let's check it out. The show starts with Randy Orton to, of course, a lot of booze. This is this was the Randy Orton that he's been most of his career and needs to kind of stay. Anytime he turns face, he gets stale and kind of dies a slow death because he's unmotivated. He wants to be a heel. Let's keep him that way. And uh, this was great. He really didn't say anything. This was almost the exact same thing that happened when Roman Reigns beat beat Undertaker's... He didn't beat his streak. Streak's already dead, but beat Undertaker at WrestleMania a few years ago. He came out trying to explain uh, why he beat up Edge, crowd booed him, and he uh, eventually, after about five to six to seven minutes, just said he can't do this and walked off. Good to go. I liked it. Slow burn. I hope they can... Keep this story going to WrestleMania. I don't want to see Edge versus Randy Orton at the Super Showdown. I don't want to see it there. And I'd prefer not to have it at Elimination Chamber. It'd be cool if they could somehow keep the momentum going all the way to WrestleMania. Alright, well from that high to this low. Lana versus Liv Morgan. For what? For what? Why are we doing this still? Huh. The only good Morgan beat beat Lana. Who cares? The only good thing from this Ruby Riot returned. That was cool. She looked great. I think she had extra tattoos. Her hair was greenish and longer. Uh, I missed her. She was cool. Uh, but and then she, you know, the the Riot Squad stuff. But you all knew when she came out, she was going to turn on Liv Morgan. She did. Which, uh, are they putting her with Lana? Or was Lana just there? I don't know. I guess that's the only good thing to come, back, come from this is Ruby Riot's return. Because really, I'm scared that if she's, if Ruby Riot is kind of becoming part of Lana's gimmick, that we're going to just continue the Lana, Liv Morgan, Rusev, Bobby Lashley trash that's been going on for months. So hopefully, hopefully not, but they will. Let's be serious. Drew McIntyre versus Mojo Rawley and Riddick uh, Moss, his offensive lineman, which is just, it just sounds stupid. It just does. Drew McIntyre wins in... About five seconds, two seconds to do a claymore, three seconds for the pinfall. That sounds about right. And which was great. Let's build up Drew McIntyre. Loved that. There has to be. There's someone else on the roster. Come on, man. Mojo, he's your 24 7 champion. You just gave him an offensive lineman. You just gave him Riddick Moss. And then just pop. That's it. It just shows how, even though Mojo Rawley looks like the best, or possibly the best, 24-7 champion they've ever had, you're still done in five seconds to someone who actually matters. Yeah, I didn't like it. Pick someone else. I like Drew McIntyre getting the squash. Not over Mojo, who looked like he was getting a push. Clearly, he's not. He's getting a 24-7 push. Ah, oh, damn it. Also not a fan of, uh, before the bell actually rung, Drew McIntyre called himself, he was kind of like calling out Brock Lesnar, and he called himself the, the sexy Scotsman or whatever. 
God damn it. If they go down that path, he's not beating Brock in Mania. A sexy Scotsman gimmick isn't going to work, and he's been doing that for a while. Like, frankly, that's just the fat bastard. That's all it is. It's the fat bastard gimmick. He's just not fat. You guys seen Austin Powers? Look at my sexy body. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's who the fuck they're giving to Drew McIntyre. That's not getting it done. That's not a WWE champion material. Don't do that. Just let him be a badass Scotsman. Give him a Braveheart gimmick if you like. Jesus sakes, it's not that hard with a 6'6 Scotsman. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I should have just done a wrestle rant just on that. Kevin Owens versus oh Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders versus Buddy Murphy and AOP. I feel like we've seen this a bunch. It's just they're just turning the same thing around. This time this was pretty good though. It was good. I like the storyline. They took out both War Raiders first. One due to an injury, and the other one from uh, Seth Rollins' interference curb stomp on the outside. And Kevin Owens is all alone, one on three. That that's always good to get. Uh, the crowd behind a baby face. And Owens is perfect for that type of stuff. He's got a, kind of like a badass vibe to him. And then he, uh, he, he Buddy Murphy, just, just, just get the fuck out of here, man. He, he got, he lost. He was a first eliminated from his team. Then uh, I think it was Ake, Occam. Then Occam. Then Razor got in. And then, of course, Seth Rollins interfered. Razor picks up the victory. This was perfectly booked for what it was. It really was. Just because Owens looked like a million bucks, but he had to lose. Because when he was coming back, I'm like, good lord. If he wins this, their faction should just break up. Just just blow up. Because they do this all the time with factions. For some reason, anytime WWE gets a nice heel faction, they lose all the time. Look at the OC. Do you remember the League of Nations? That's that's a recipe for an absolute abomination, quick death. So they won. That's good. I guess Buddy Murphy <laughs> looked like a bum, but hey, he's Buddy Murphy. Great seller, though. Aleister Black versus Eric Young. God damn it. Speaking of, see, this, this whole night felt like everything was good, but then had a sprinkle of bad. Good. Alistair Black was on TV. Uh, and he won. But I'm tired. First of all, I'm tired of the goddamn squash matches from him. It's been over a year. Let's go. Do something. And then Eric Young. Every time I see him, it just breaks my heart. Like Christ. I, I, I'm assuming he's still in the company so he can retire and do some training and backstage producing and stuff. Cool, but... Just retire then. You look bad. You look bad. He's too talented to be getting squashed. And no one giving a shit. They did Sanity all wrong, by the way. All fucking wrong. Like, it's a shame. Eric Young, please. I don't want to see you on TV anymore. I just don't. Not, not in this company. Go be a producer for WWE. Go backstage. Then we had Rey Mysterio. Versus Angel Garza. Is he up now? I guess he's up. I guess this was his coming up party. With Zelina Vega. I really like that pairing. Because that means I'm hoping when Andrade comes back. They have a... That's a nice tag team. That's a good tag team. And it makes sense. They look good together. They have a good wrestling chemistry I would assume. Because I mean, they their styles are similar. Zelina Vega is a perfect mouthpiece for them. All that whole thing. They're both attractive. She's attractive. That fits. That fits. That's a good tag team. Rey Mysterio. I don't know how much longer he can do this. He's still good in the ring, but you can just tell it's it's getting. He's wearing down. He is. But this was no. This was okay. It was an okay little match. And he did his uh, oh, the, the hammerlock DDT on the cement. They've been doing that for months, a couple months now. Rey Mysterio got hit with it. He was holding his neck, so I'm guessing he's going to miss a, a week or two before he makes another <laughs> triumphant comeback. They keep doing that. It's like they're cycling out. 
which person in this feud gets DDT'd on cement and then comes back. Let's just have a cement match. Christ, something. Not sure if they can do that, but something. And then we got Rhea Ripley coming out to confront Charlotte Flair and basically tell her to challenge her at Mania. It's kind of odd, but I like it. And this was in the dirt sheets recently, so I wasn't shocked that it was Rhea Ripley. And I don't think the crowd was either. There were Rhea chants going on. So it would have been nice if they could have masked that slightly better. But if that's what we get at WrestleMania, I'm good for that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that completely. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Because I didn't want to see Becky Charlotte. No one wants to see that again. And we damn sure don't want to see Bailey Charlotte. Ugh, good God. So yeah, Charlotte Rhea Ripley. I'm intrigued. Ugh, what is what is Bailey going to do? Mm, let's just think about that. At Mania. Hopefully she's not the champion by then. Hopefully she loses it at Elimination Chamber. Cross our fingers for that one. Asuka versus Natalia. God damn it. Another match that feels like I've seen a hundred goddamn times. Oscar wins. And what was an okay match, it was alright. It got a lot of time for what it was. A lot of submission holds that just went to commercial breaks and stuff. Bah. Oscar won. Becky came out. Oscar challenged her to another rematch. She's not going to win, so who cares? Becky accepts. Becky kind of came off kind of like a dick, but who cares? We're getting this Oscar versus Becky. I'm assuming Elimination Chamber. Uh, could be in Saudi Arabia, but I doubt it for obvious reasons. And then we have uh, No More Contender, the main event. Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Ricochet, winner faces Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown. And Brock Lesnar, heel. Seth Rollins, heel. Bobby Lashley, heel. Ricochet, face. Who the fuck do you think was going to win? Uh, obviously, Ricochet was going to win, and he did. So, I mean, I'm intrigued by that matchup. We know we know who's walking. Lesnar's making it to WrestleMania, let's be honest. Like, they even keep showing the Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Oh, Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. Mania matchup. Come on. Yeah, we, come on. He's bringing it all the way to WrestleMania. This is just a filler because Brock has to be at Saudi Arabia. He won't be at Elimination Chamber. Just what it is. And uh, it is low key a dream match. Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet. If you guys don't know, Ricochet was a big deal on the indie scene. So I'm actually looking forward to that. Not going to win, but I hope they give him a little time. Hopefully it's not a Kofi, a Kofi Kingston uh, duplicate. But overall, this match was pretty good. Towards the end, I couldn't tell if Bobby Lashley got injured. Or maybe just got the wind knocked out of him. But they did like a three-man superplex. And he landed weird. Like he re noticeably landed odd. And you could see Ricochet and Lashley whispering to each other for a good about 20 to 30 seconds. And it went right to the finish. Lashley like did not get back up after they were done whistling, oh, uh, whispering, <laughs> and he just climbed the top. Ricochet climbed the top, hit his uh six thirty, and that was it. So I don't know if he said he was winded or he thinks he may have hurt his back or something, but they went straight to the finish, and that was it. Huh? Raw was good overall, like. Every segment, I really wasn't bored. The only thing that really kind of bored me was Asuka and Natalia. And that's not Asuka's fault. It's Natalia's. I'm tired of Natalia. She bores the shit out of me. Poem, promos, matches, entrance, everything about Natalia bores the holy shit out of me. That's all. And there's no no disrespect to the, the Hart family. Like Her push should have came a decade ago. I'm done. I'm tired of seeing her on my TV. She should be a trainer in the back, teach or in the NXT, teach those women how to wrestle. Do that. 
But overall, what did you guys think of Raw? What do you guys think of uh, Super Showdown? Is this going to be another glorified house show? Like the other Saudi Arabia pay-per-views? Or will this actually feel like and look like a pay-per-view? I don't know. What I do know, Goldberg is going to be at SmackDown for what? Let's find out. I'm not excited. I'm not excited. Hopefully for Matt Riddle. Then I'd be excited. They got real life beef. That would be pretty cool. But if it's for like an Undertaker rematch, just psh, cancel my WWE subscription right now. If you are still here, you are a real one. Was that 10 minutes? I don't know. Feels like I may have gone over. 